with a button for each floor and you can call the elevator to a specific floor whenever you want from wherever you want and you'll probably hear all those controllers going and here comes my elevator <laughs> What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic, and I am super excited about this one. This is the big project I was talking about. I don't know how many controllers there are here, there are a ton, and this is what the circuit looks like. But needless to say, you can make logic gates in Scrap Mechanic, so you can make an AND gate, or an OR gate, or an XOR gate, or a NOR gate. But basically, what we've got here is we've got some bits, and we've got five bits in a line here, plus a sixth bit for other stuff. We've got, these are pulsers right here, so as you send a signal, it will rotate past the sensor once and you'll get one pulse out of it rather than having a continuous stream. Uh, same here, you'll also get one pulse. Uh, these are OR gates, these are AND gates, so obviously both levers have to be there for the sensor to be activated. Some more AND gates over here, some more pulsers, we've got some more bits over here, and we've got some more OR gates over here, uh, and some more OR gates over here. And then we've got two motors. So in case you're all wondering what this is, it's an elevator. Now what makes this elevator different? Well, as far as I can tell, this is the only elevator I've ever seen in Scrap Mechanic that has five independent floors with a button for each floor and you can call the elevator to a specific floor whenever you want from wherever you want. And you'll probably hear all those controllers going and here comes my elevator. This is mid the most fun to build and to figure out how the hell to do it and it's been absolutely great and my elevator went a little bit too far but that's okay the circuit is a little bit slow um so as you can see there it's now locked my elevator in place so i'm on the fifth floor it's part of the uh the map with the garage i've kind of figured now though that this map is getting a little bit laggy because of uh the complicated mess above us here but basically Depending on no matter what floor I'm on I can go into my elevator now It is hollowed out because it has to be very very light the chain mechanism is actually not as strong as I thought it would be I wish it was a little bit stronger, but it is what it is, but I can hit floor number two You see and you kind of have to hold it for a bit because it has to set the bit But once the bits set you can hear it kind of click uh, then you just wait and After it runs through its math trying to figure out where you are and where you need to go the elevator it kind of glitches sometimes but it will unwinch you and I will stop on the second floor now. So I'm, it doesn't have a queue like a normal elevator. If I hit three buttons, it's gonna screw it up. You have to wait until it finishes, until it gets to the floor you asked it to, then hit another button and you can go to a different floor. But no matter what floor you hit, it will always stop on the floor you want it to. You can see now there, I'm on the second floor. And oh, you know what? I need my elevator to come down. Maybe I'll call it to the first floor. But again, you hold the button a bit. It's all set up with OR gates. So what's happening is each gate is a bearing with a controller and a wooden block that blocks a sensor. Now, if the sensor's on, it's a one. If the sensor's off, it's a zero. So doing a lot of logic and binary logic and figuring out how the whole circuit's going to work, I was able to determine the structure I needed to make an elevator go to a floor. So you can see there's a sensor on the back here. This tells it what floor it's actually on. So right now the elevator knows, okay, I'm on the first floor, no problem. It also knows that I told it to go to the first floor. So I said, hey, I want you to go to the first floor. So it set the floor one bit to be a one, not a zero. So the floor one sensor, if I go upstairs, is on right now. The combination of it knowing that it's on the first floor and I have the floor one sensor means, okay, lock everything down so it doesn't move and turn off all the motors. Problem solved. Now when I hit the next button, what it actually does is it turns off the number one and it says, okay, I want to go to number four now, but I'm still on the first floor. So it then goes through this really complicated series of yes and no questions to say, which floor do I need to go to? And is that direction up or down? Once it says, okay, that direction is up, it turns on the up motor and it turns off the locks so that the elevator can move up. When it hits the floor four sensor and it has the floor four um, bit activated, it'll say, okay, this is good to go. I'm going to stop here. I absolutely love this. This is circuitry 101. It's fantastic. It's taking your computer and bringing it back to the most basic concepts. And when I first built the circuit, I had an idea of how it was supposed to work. I built it. It didn't work. I had to tweak a few things, but now I can safely say I just made it to the fourth floor with the press of a button. So I will admit, um, it's not perfect. 
there are also way easier ways to do this for example if you don't use a chain using the chain is really part of the problem um, because when you use a chain you now have to know what floor you're on and what floor you need to go to which means you need to know which direction you are and half the circuitry up there is really just to handle that portion of it um, if you did it with a piston like a series of pistons it would be really really easy because you set the bit of the floor you want to go to and you say okay this floor activates five pistons this floor activates four this floor activates three and so on and so on so you could just have it go oh i want to go to floor one activate deactivate all of them and only activate the one and that would make for a very very simple circuit i can do that sometime if you guys want to see it no problem it would also probably be less laggy um, the main reason I did this with the chain was number one, authenticity. A real elevator uses cables and obviously it has a counterweight and it uses a weight system. I use it like a winch. But regardless, a real elevator has cables and I didn't want to lose that aspect. Plus the concept of having a motor rotate in both directions just fascinated me. Um, the other reason I did it is of course obviously the challenge. This circuit has taken a little bit to build. It's been quite a project. It's been exhausting. But it's been, uh, it's been quite fun. I'll just explain a little bit. So these bits right here, they're very simple. And I'll explain in a different video uh, how to make circuitry. I'll do that as a follow-up video to this. Um, I'll make a video and I'll go through how to make really simple AND gates, OR gates, NOR gates, uh, XOR gates, all that sort of thing. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll explain that stuff to you guys as well as how to make memory here. Um, but each one of these memory bits represents a floor. This memory bit here represents the locks that go underneath the elevator and hold it into place. Um, this is an OR gate with any one of the 10 buttons. So there are 10 buttons, uh, one inside the elevator, one outside. Any one of the 10 activates this. This is actually used to send a pulse to reset all the bits on all the floors. So as soon as you click any one button, it resets all the floors and then it sets the floor afterwards. That's why it needs a pulse. The pulse resets them, but then it'll never actually pulse on the way back. And the other one sets them. When you set the bit, and I'll explain it in a later video, but the memory is actually two... two bearings so one bearing will set it into place and then it will hold itself there until you swing the other bearing out and that's the reset on it um, so again I, I'll explain that a little bit later this little lovely dial here tells me which floor I'm on so it's just five stacked bearings each one up to a controller each controller hooked up to the sensors in the floor and the reason I use that is because by comparing this to which floor you've selected or which floor you haven't selected then I can determine basically um, whether I need to go up or down. And that's what all these AND and OR gates do here. They make the decision on, okay, do I need to go up or do I need to go down? And so that's what all that does. And then these right here are really simple. These are just knots, but that's so I can make the gate decisions. Like, for example, if you're on the fifth floor, I know if you pick the fifth floor and any other floor other than five, you want to go down. So that's what it'll do. Same sense if you're on the second floor and you pick any floor but the first floor, so any floor not one, then you'll go up but if you pick one you'll go down so that's part of the and gates one of the and gates says two and one goes up or down sorry and two and not one goes up it isn't perfect i will make a better elevator i promise but the better elevator won't use the chain i love the chain i love how authentic the chain is but it does cause lag issues it's also a lot harder of a circuit to do controlling the motor up and down so I will make a new elevator that uses the piston method and it'll go probably like 20 floors or as big as I can make it go. And I'll have individual floor selection on all those. But again, that'll be a much simpler circuit. I promise you that. It's very, very easy to do that kind of circuit. Um, this circuit was just a little bit crazy. Come on up, elevator. And there it comes perfect so you can see the lock swinging down there again it is a little slow i apologize it's a slow elevator there's obviously all this circuitry going on upstairs to make it make those decisions but you can see there it came up to the fourth floor so you know it's your typical day at the office you come in you've got this nice glass concrete building nothing really special about it no doors yet there's really been no focus on anything but this hold that fourth floor button And there she goes. So it takes a bit, guys. It does take a bit for it to get going. Obviously, there's still some circuitry issues. Sometimes it'll skip sensors. Sometimes sensors, the pulsers especially, the pulsers have a real pain in the ass problem where sometimes they'll skip the pulse, um, where they'll, they'll pulse, but it'll go too quick. So there are a few bugs I got to work out with the circuit. It's not perfect, but remember, guys, if you like this video, 
hit that like button, draw me that subscribe if you haven't already. So if you guys like this video and you want to see more videos, I will be posting some tutorials on how this circuit tree works. I will post on not this particular one because honestly it's such a cluster I don't even know anymore. But I'll post some basic circuitry stuff. I will post some tutorials on the suspension glitch. So remember guys, hit that button. And as always, have a great time and I'll see you all next time.